there's a couple teams in the AFC that have gone a little bit under the radar, especially with the big moves for Aaron Rodgers. Of course, you have Mahomes, Burrow, and Allen, the big three that everyone's always talking about. The upstart Jaguars, who Ziggy has apparently attached himself to throughout this season. I think that's your AFC team, right? Oh, absolutely. So you have all these teams, and I think those are the the big five that people are paying attention to. Uh, Lamar Jackson, the Ravens drama. Then you have teams like the Broncos, who have this big move with Sean Payton in the offseason. And they're just kind of flying under the radar. Very talented team. And you have to remember, last year, they lost nine one-score games. Four and nine in one-score games. 0-3 in overtime games. If you flip around that 9-4 and four record, this is a 10-win team. On the other hand, if they scored 20 points a game last year, also a 10-win team. So it wasn't like the Broncos were going out and getting murdered every week. It was unwatchable football. It was really tough offense to watch. I, I ran a Broncos show with uh, their former offensive lineman, Orlando Franklin, and one of the uh, volume hosts, Liv Moods. It was just brutal to have to watch those games every single day, every single Sunday. But when we talk about the Vikings being 11-0 and in one-score games, the Broncos were kind of the reverse of that. And there is a lot of talent, and with Sean Payton coming in, you now give Russell Wilson the best offensive mind that he has ever been with. Ziggy, why are you smiling at that? Well, look, I mean, Sean Payton, of course, he's an excellent offensive mind. I'm not trying to question that. But, you know, I think back to the Russell Wilson we saw last year. And look, he's getting old. He's a player who's relied a lot on his athleticism. And I'm just not sure we're going to see Russell Wilson take that step forward. And you look at who the backup is, right? If Russell Wilson sucks, it's like Ben DiNucci. Sean Payton Jared said Stidham. today. They also have Jarrett Stidham. They, they brought oh, him over they, from they, they overpaid Jarrett Stidham for what? I think they gave him $10 million or something outrageous. He looked terrible in uh, Las Vegas. But look, you know, Sean Payton, he said this morning that uh, after Ben DiNucci threw a pick six, that Ben DiNucci should be considering getting a job as a Walmart greeter. You know, Rob Walton recently bought the Broncos, owner of Walmart. You know, if Ben DiNucci is a Walmart greeter, I think Russell Wilson's like a Walmart floor manager. You know, he's significantly better, right? He can take on some responsibility. He's kind of a leader, but he's not the kind of guy I want to trust my franchise to anymore. It looks increasingly after we saw what happened in Seattle, like he was carried by Pete Carroll. They can make Geno Smith look good. They can make anyone look good. I don't know. I'm just not sold on Russell Wilson and the Broncos, even with Sean Payton. I think Denver could be really good. How good? I this is a this is a team who I think talent wise is the second best in the AFC West. Better than the Chargers, better than the Raiders, not quite as good as the Chiefs. But two games last year against Kansas City, both close games. They beat the Chargers in the most recent game they played, I believe. Uh, and now you bring in their coach is an idiot too. He's a moron. Yes, he's an idiot. Well, well, and, no, I, I don't no, want to go so far. You and Andrew rip apart Nathaniel Nobody Hackett, wanted but, to play for him. It, it, it's like similar to Cliff Kingsbury. No one he wanted to moron. play for him. He had no control. He, yeah, he was he was terrible. He was, he was, he's a bad he was head terrible. coach. Bad Everyone head. can agree but on yes. that. Bad yes, head coach. Yes. yes. So we, now, we try, we try and make things a little nicer on the show sometimes. And now you bring in, no, we don't. What are you talking about? <laughs> you bring in a Super Bowl winning coach in Sean Payton. Last time he had a Super Bowl level quarterback was Drew Brees and the Saints were a great team every year. So now you have Russ and this offense with good weapons. One of the best defenses in football with one of the better head coaches to ever coach. Mm-hmm. I think this team can get over the hump, be four and two in that division, and get into the playoffs. This is a super talent. It's not a crappy team like the Texans who have nobody. This is a super talented team who, are, who was playing for more on last year. Yeah. I think they're going to be very good. <laughs> I, I, I seriously do. You talk about the offensive talent on this team, and, and we, know, we know the defense is very good. They, Patrick Sertain, obviously, Justin Simmons, great secondary. It's one of the best in football. The defensive line, a, a little weak. We'll see, we'll see what, how that goes this season. Uh, but again, should be a very good defense. On offense, I was just looking about looking at what the Broncos have been doing this offseason. Offensive line, much, much better. Last year, they gave up 63 sacks. They're going to be good. They've addressed it in many ways. They brought Mike McGlinchey over from San Francisco. They've replaced Dalton Reisner, who was a big problem at left guard with Ben Powers, who a lot of people thought was one of the best interior offensive linemen, maybe the best in free agency. And then you have Garrett Bowles returning from injury. He had a broken leg last October. He's over there at left tackle. So the offensive line should be much better. Ziggy, I know you're talking about how Russell Wilson isn't as mobile as he used to be. Still a mobile quarterback, but shoring up that offensive line a little bit, definitely going to help. And when you look on the outside, Corlin Sutton, Jerry Judy, and Tim Patrick, 
None yeah. of them really scare me. I think Sutton, when he, when last year Sutton was supposed to explode. And yeah, we're all disappointed. Good, that's a good receiver. The whole Broncos, it was underwhelming for the Broncos. As a team underwhelming as a it was whole. underwhelming season. But there's undeniable talent. Javante Williams, too, should be coming back. It just feels like one of this team, one of these teams where if it all clicks, they can be really, really good. But last season was so bad. It's hard to envision Sean Payton being able to fix all of that at once. But I'm not going to doubt him because, like you said, the Saints are were good every single season with him. And when you look at all the, the teams that are competing in the AFC and the NFC, really, in these championship games, Kyle Shanahan, one of the best offensive minds. Nick Sirianni, who's one of the better head coaches in football at the moment, it seems. Andy Reid, arguably the only guy who could be better than Sean Payton. And Zach Taylor, uh, people criticize Zach, but you can't argue with the success he's had. These coaches, Doug Peterson, too. Look at what he did with Kansas City last year. Took him to the wire in the playoffs. Sean Payton's just as good, if not better, than most of those guys. And he has a lot to work with here. I'm excited to see what Russell Wilson can do. Yeah, I, I think the, the biggest part for me in being pro Broncos this season is I think, like I said, they have the overall roster is the second most talented roster in that division. It's not like they're a crappy team. I think they're better than the Chargers and the Raiders. Yeah. So I think they can be four and two in the AFC West. When you look at them, though, in terms of the entire AFC, I feel like a lot of people are saying, okay, Chiefs should win their division. Bills will probably, Bills I mean, or Jets, the, the, right? The Broncos were crap last year and played the Chiefs close twice. No, they did. They did. Go ahead, Ziggy. I'm sorry. Well, well, I think just for the Broncos, there's two questions you've got to ask. Because y'all are right that they've got a talented roster. Sean Payton's good at all of this. There are two things that worry me. First, the Broncos relied heavily on their defense last year, and they probably will this year. But their excellent defensive coordinator, Ejiro Evero, gone. Right? Sean Payton didn't want him around, so he left. Second question you have to ask yourself. Russell Wilson, one of the big problems last year, he was recalcitrant to coaching. Right? Dude just did not want to listen to the coaching. I get the coaches were bad, but part of why they were bad was they couldn't get Russell Wilson to listen to them. You think, okay, you know, Sean Payton, he's got a big name. He's got a brand. Maybe Russell Wilson will be able to listen to him. But if he wouldn't listen to Pete Carroll... I don't know. So if those things go right, the defense stays elite. Russell Wilson listens to the coaching. I totally agree. It's a talented roster. They could even threaten Kansas City. But that's a lot to ask for the defense to repeat and for Russell Wilson to change his ways. A couple things. First, Ziggy, great pronunciation on the defensive coordinator from last year. That was that was beautiful. Yeah, I, I didn't even... I Rolled off the top. Yeah, I couldn't that even was, that was come really close nice. to pronouncing that. I don't even know if that's <laughs> right. I'll be honest. I made that up on the spot, but we're hoping. Uh, but with Russell Wilson... I, I first off, Sean Payton. I, I, who knows really what was going on behind the scenes there? Uh, luckily, since I was doing the Broncos show, I've been able to hear a lot about how things were handled and, and what people actually think of, of Russell Wilson, sort of behind closed doors. I think that Sean Payton, out of anyone, he'll, Russell Wilson will respect what he has to say because, as we said before, Super Bowl winning coach. I don't think Russ, though, is the problem there. He's a hard worker. He comes in. There was yeah, the whole parking spot drama. We had Melvin Gordon on one of our shows, and Gordon said flat out, he said, no, that was never true. Russ just got there before everyone else and worked hard and worked super hard. Like That's why he had, it was in the same parking spot, and those rumors started up. I think that he's generally well-liked in the locker room because he, he just seems like a really nice guy who wants to win football games. He just kind of gets this bad rep because he's, yeah, he's a quirky dude, but at the end of the day, I, I do think he's a good leader and someone that you can rally around. So I look at Denver as a whole, and I say their schedule, they play the AFC East and the NFC North. NFC North is one of the weaker divisions in the NFL this season, except you know the Vikings might run the table, we all know. The Lions are going to run the table. The Lions will run the table. They'll have their chance against the Jets, against Cleveland. So let's, let's put a bow on this uh, Broncos discussion right here. In the AFC, let's pretend the Bills win, Chiefs, Jaguars, and uh, who's the other one I'm forgetting right now? And the Bengals. Let's say they all win. Uh, let's just say they all win. Let's say, let's say, just assume. Just all, right, assume. All, right, all, right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I'm going to pretend no one else from the South is going to the playoffs. Between the Chargers, the Browns, the Ravens, the Steelers, and the Jets, and the Dolphins, we'll say. Do the Bron- are the Broncos better than any of those teams? Because the, the AFC That's, is just so deep. I was going to be one of the point. It's like the, the fact that the it, it stinks for the Broncos being in the AFC because you can argue that they're not even a top 10 team. That's yeah, 10 teams a top right there. 10 team. Where in the NFC, they're probably a top five team. 
And the and that's, NFC, what, that's what the difficult thing is. They could win the North in the NFC. They yeah. would probably win the South. I don't think they'd beat out Philly, and they probably won't beat out San Francisco. But they could, they, I mean, they'd probably be the second best team in the NFC East. You can argue. Yeah. They could. Well, but it's good news for the Broncos, right? Because they get to play the AFC East this year. So if they really are better than the Jets and the Dolphins, they'll get a chance to prove it. And they get get Cleveland, too. And they get get the Chargers twice. So for Denver, the the opportunity is right out in front of them. I think this team takes some major strides forward. I think they probably come in around eight or nine wins. We're going to have to dive into the schedule a little more. The Broncos host the Jets, don't they? They, I believe they do host the Jets. That's probably a winnable game. That's yes, that's the one. I think it's week five. Yeah, it's probably a winnable game because we're looking at the Jets' schedule the other day, and it's you know obviously you have Mahomes in there and Dak and all that, but weeks five and six you have Denver and Philly. Yeah, so that's, that's that Jets' schedule is really tough. The first six weeks, really first twelve weeks, a lot of close. I hope games. they're one and five. Yeah. Okay, so so, I, so I've got Denver at the moment missing the playoffs, but I think they do have a run at it. Do you guys? Would you guys agree with that? I'm going to say four and two in their in their, their division. I'm going to say about nine and eight, ten and seven overall, and flirt with the, maybe, seven, maybe flirt the, with the seven seed. seed. Yeah. Okay. And Ziggy, you seem to be out on them. I'm feeling six and ten, seven or not, seven and nine. Oh, so you're not. You're really not. I, I think anything. they will improve, right? Because you have to keep in mind, eight wins is doubling their win total from last year, almost. Yeah. How many games they won last year? Like six. They have five. Five wins last year. They they got five. Eight's almost double that. I, I think seven wins. I just, I don't see it for this team. I don't think it's going to come together. There's a lot of hype, but it's never been substantiated. This year's not changing it. I mean, but losing, what, four games in OT and like eight? Yeah, by three one over time, nine those, one that, score. That's bound to change, you would hope. But I also think the defense is going to regress a little bit. The defense was incredible last year, right? Again, as we said, if, they, if the offense scores 20 points a game, they win 10 games. Just 20 I just points, don't yeah. think we're going to see. Just 20. And 20 points is, that's probably below NFL average or at least close to it. Oh, yeah. I just, I can't. 25, they're, they're uh, much higher. That was the same deal with the Jets. I think if they had scored like 21 points a game, they'd they like be like 12 and 5. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they're that's one why they could teams. be scary this year. No, that, that that's why the AFC is going to be so fun is because you have these established teams who have been good year after year now. And all of a sudden this season, and you know, you kind of get this every NFL offseason. But now you're seeing the Broncos, the Jets, the Browns, who we're going to talk about in a second. All these teams and that nobody, are just kind of getting along. Nobody's giving us any yeah, respect. Any course. respect at all. Of course. And the Steelers as well. well we will have a prediction video. We, we did our predictions uh, in one of the recent episodes. But we'll be releasing that separately coming out. So again, make sure you check that out. We know that Steelers fans dislike us at the moment. They love Jack. But I do think that as we go forward in this offseason, they'll, they'll come around on me and Andrew. Uh, well, not Andrew, but me and Ziggy at least. Because my opinion has changed. I am a changed man when it comes to the Pittsburgh Steelers. I think that this is... I mean, Andrew's saying five wins is absurd. No, no, no. This is definitely a playoff contending game. That's ridiculous. For sure. For sure. 